I'm at Superside in Orangeburg, South Carolina, speaking with Nick Sangella, and we're talking about this fascinating new piece of machinery. It's a robotic lawnmower. Absolutely, it's, uh, the automower, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, of course, the idea that I don't have to go out and push the lawnmower sounds attractive to me, but are there benefits to your grass when you use this machine? Absolutely, uh, a lot of them. And uh, the, the biggest one is that because the lawn never experiences being scalped, and it, it, it's always maintained at the right height and you'll never take off more than a third or any actually takes off a lot less. Uh, the lawn is always really nice looking and it's always as healthy as it can be. So we do tell people we recommend never cut more than a third of the blade off at any one time. But obviously if you could go out there more often, but that's just more than most people can handle. So how often can this little mower go off and about how much does it take off each time? Yeah, it all depends on the season and the type of grass and growth rate, but you could take it, it could be taking as much as maybe a 15th of the grass. A uh, 15th? Something very, wow. just a tiny fraction. Wow. And uh, yeah, it could do it very frequently. You know, we try to encourage people to let their grass clippings fall back on the lawn. Mm -hmm. um, for the several things, you know, we're all concerned with the quality of our stormwater, so putting them on the edge of the road where they run in the storm drain is not a good idea. Absolutely. But also, it can add about a quarter of the nitrogen needed back to the lawn and also gives it a source of organic matter, which always improves the quality of your Absolutely. soil. Um, so. I guess when you take a tiny bit off, you don't have any problems with clumping. Talk to me about what the grass clippings look like when you, when the lawnmower finishes. Yeah, so the grass clippings in a, in a situation with a, an automower is almost non-existent. You don't see them. They're so small, they just fall into the, soil, into the, into the thatch layer and they decompose quick enough so they don't build thatch because they're so small. The microorganisms can keep up with the decomposition process, so it works out. And also, um, the blade seems important. Like I've got an old, a big old lawnmower that my husband rides for me, and it's got a flail type grade. And I know that kind of is rough on the edge of the grass and can cause some diseases and things. What kind of blade do you have on this machine? So uh, the the automower uses pivoting razor blades that are pivoting. Yeah, they're they're literally razor blades. So it's cutting with a razor's edge all the time, like shaving. Um, I understand when I read about this that it says you can cut the grass when it's wet. With a normal lawnmower, there's a lot of drag that can kind of pull the roots out. Is that going to, why do you feel like it's safe to cut when this is wet? Sure. So the automower has a, has a device or a plate underneath that protects the blade disc from drag. It doesn't come in contact with the, with the blade of the grass. The only thing that comes in contact with the blade of the grass is the cutting edge of the blade, which is only about a quarter of an inch and it's only on the front edge of the cutting surface, so it doesn't slow down the blade. So how does this lawnmower know where to go? So it uses uh, GPS navigation to create a map of the yard and basically like an invisible dog fence that we have to install, and it knows which parts of the yard to go to and to stay in to make sure that the lawn is nice and evenly maintained. How does it know, how does it get charged up? It makes its way back home using a guide wire and following, uh, it's going right back to its own charging station. I don't have to take it home and plug it in. No, it just takes care of it all by itself. Now, I'm one of those people who shouldn't have done it, but I made all these islands in my yard of camellias and azaleas and things, um, and I don't want it to run through and cut those down. Yeah. What are we gonna do in a yard like mine? Yeah, it's no problem. We just create islands with that <gasps> invisible wire, or that, that uh -huh. wire like the invisible fence, and make sure the mower doesn't go in there. It's no problem at all. And if it's a sturdy enough object, like a, let's say a light pole that's round, uh, the mower can just bump it and it doesn't damage it at all. It has a nice, easy rubber bumper and it's just very soft and it'll turn around. Though, you know, you do want to respect it as a lawnmower. Um, it's safer than a, a traditional lawnmower because you don't have an operator. Yeah. What about pine cones and things that fall on the lawn? I'm sure you should, you're supposed to pick those up, but you sure. just can't do everything. That's right. And it, that's not a problem. So if the blade does come into contact something that's harder than a blade of grass, it pivots out of the way. That's part of the reason it has a, a pivoting razor blade so that it doesn't damage the blade and doesn't damage the mower and it doesn't really damage the thing that it runs over. So if it does happen, just moves out of the way and keeps on going. Um, I have some neighbors who um, have different sleep schedules because they work in the hospital and I try to be cognizant of that. How loud is this and how often do you have to limit when you can run it? So it's almost silent. As far as if you're in your house, you're not gonna know it's running. Uh, it's quieter than a Roomba that runs in your house. So it is absolutely, it's practically silent as far as, so you can run in the middle of the night. Now, it has headlights on it, but does it need those to run at night? 
It does not. It's uh, mainly just because it looks really cool. So we're just trying to appeal to men who want a sports car because this is a really sleek looking piece Something of Something like equipment. that. It, it looks pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, one of our folks put a comparison next to a Bugatti sports car and uh, it looked pretty similar. You know, with our new yards, a lot of people love some drama and they'll have slopes here and there. And But those places can be very dangerous for somebody to go out, especially if it's kind of wet and, and you have a heavy lawnmower. Yeah. Can this help with that situation? Absolutely. Uh, the automower can handle slopes that are dangerous for people to maintain normally. It'll maintain it with ease. My lawnmower needs to go in every year and be have the oil changed, it needs to be greased, and I really should change the cutting blade and have it sh or sharpen it pretty frequently. How much maintenance is there on this and, and how hard is that to do? It's very little maintenance. The only regular maintenance on the automower is replacing the blades. And that's something that you just do with a Phillips head screwdriver and you replace it in about two minutes. Just anybody can do it. Well, how much of a trench do you have to make in my grass to put that perimeter wire in? It's almost not noticeable when we're done. So it's a, it, we have a machine that cuts a swath through the, uh, through the ground and lays the wire. And after we're done, um, depending on the, how new the grass is, you almost can't tell that it was even there. What if something happens and there's a break in it? Are you going to have to replace the whole thing? You don't. No, we could definitely find that. And uh, it, there's easy ways to find the breaks and, uh, and repair them. What if somebody comes by and they like this and they try to pick it up and take it to their house? Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a few great things about that. But uh, first thing is a really loud alarm that's really obnoxious. Uh, so the, if anybody tried to do that, um, they'd be greeted with that. And then it immediately sends a notification through a cellular signal to uh, anybody that has is linked to that mower, letting them know, hey, I've been picked up. And then the last step, it's GPS located. They can't be defeated. We like to go to the mountains in the summer. You know, sometimes we get these big, fierce rainstorms. Mm -hmm. um, and I might not want it outside in the rain. What can I do about that? So if, in the case that there's something that, um, that is it, like a really bad storm, you don't want it out, you could just, on the app on your phone, you could just tell it to go home, park it until further notice, until that storm may pass. Uh, but as long as there's uh, not more than five inches of water, it's going to navigate through the rain just fine. So I come home from vacation and I don't have to say, oh my goodness, I can't fix a nice supper tonight, I can't wash the clothes because I've got to go cut the grass. Everything is waiting for me. That's right, just perfectly maintained. This is a remarkable sounding piece of equipment. It's pretty amazing. It is. And if people want to know more about it, what's the best way for them to get information? Check out our website, go to supersod.com, and uh, that you could find uh, more information about it and we can help you out there. And of course today we're at the Orangeburg location, so if you search for Orangeburg, you'll be able to find that uh, the information for how to contact us and we'll be able to help you. The only disadvantage um, that I can see is that my husband who likes to get on the lawnmower and tell me he can't hear me when I need him no longer is going to have that excuse. That's right. <laughs>